Hello everyone! Welcome to another haul video! This time I went to the Daniel Smith Art Supply Store, which is not very close to me, but I had errands to run and I wasn't gonna pass up the opportunity. So I'm going to kind of share with everyone what I picked out. There was so much to choose from and I could have easily spent just hundreds and hundreds of dollars there. Uh, but I feel like I was pretty restrained and I only got a small bag, so let's start going through this. Oh, by the way, nothing I say is going to line up with the video because I had an option selected in my webcam that completely made all of the audio out of sync. So I am re-recording this after the fact and I hope uh, you don't mind too much. So let's start here. Starting with the pens, they are the... Uh, Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens and they are India Ink, so they're incredibly good for outlining artwork, for signing prints. They're light fast, which means that they do not fade and they're archival, so it's pretty much the perfect pen. I go through a lot of the black ones mostly when I'm signing artwork and I do, uh, when I'm inking something, I outline a lot of stuff. So I grabbed a few sizes of those to kind of restock a little bit. I got a, a fine and a small, which is smaller than the fine. I also got an extra small, which is teeny tiny for little tiny details. And I also wanted a color. I wanted green too, but I couldn't find the right size so I found this brown and I got that in small and so I'll use that to help add definition to my watercolors when I work on those so those are always much much needed and I can always use more of these pens. I found these black wing pencils up by the register and I had no idea they were even in the store and I wasn't planning on getting them but this is kind of how it works. Right, so you find something you need and you're like, oh, I'm gonna give that a try. These fantastic pencils I've heard so much about. And I just kind of threw them on the counter and I'm like, let's go for it. So what I was told was that the erasers are replaceable. Um, so you can refill those. I generally use a different eraser though. The Factus, like just the, one of the big white erasers. I have heard the lead on these is really, really smooth, and they did have one up there. They have light, dark, and medium shades, and I think I picked up the light in the medium shade. I don't quite remember, but they had one up there, and I sketched with it a little bit, and it was pretty nice, actually. <laughs> I'll have to be honest there, so I can't wait to use these uh, in my sketchbook, and if I like them, I may need to stock up a whole lot more. The watercolors are basically my main attraction to Daniel Smith. They are the Daniel Smith brand watercolors and they are so pigmented and I love these and it took me so long to narrow down which colors I wanted. At the beginning of the video you saw the selection I was picking from so there was a lot to narrow down and luckily they do have a stack of paper and several watercolor kind of like sketchbooks where they take all the colors and they make a full page swatch of each color so you can really see what every single color can do and what it looks like when it's applied thick and thin and the kind of textures it can create so I looked through all of those and I narrowed it down to these four and the first one I got is, hopefully I'm saying this right, the PM and Tight Genuine. And the Genuine usually means that there's actual ground up rocks in there, so it makes a really, really nice granular textured effect when it dries. And I absolutely love it, so I wanted something in a red, earthy tone. Undersea Green. Then we have Opera Pink. And the last one is Duochrome Hibiscus. And I believe this is the one where the base pigment is pink and then they added a blue like kind of metallic shimmer paint on top of that. So the blue doesn't really come through. It's something that you can only see or maybe you can just see better in person, but it looked absolutely fabulous and fun to play with. So I couldn't resist. I kind of really had to add another duochrome to my collection. So. 
I'll grab all the papers and test them out. Ooh, yeah, so one of the guys there uh, that was working, he gave me this chart and it's really amazing because now I can actually keep track of all the colors that I acquire over time and not accidentally double up on a color because each tube does last a while, so I definitely don't want to accidentally get any duplicates. So this is incredibly handy. So I've got it all zoomed in here for you guys, and the pink hibiscus was a little bit separated on the top, so hopefully some of the blue pigment, or I don't know if you call it pigment, some of the blue shiny parts will show up in the video, though it was incredibly hard to get it to show up. So. I did make an extra video, which I will insert here, and hopefully you will be able to see that really ultra nice kind of blue shimmer on there. Oh, I really liked it. They had it in the book where they painted over, I believe it was black watercolor ground, and you can see that bright blue so perfectly, and then when it went to the white paper, it turned, it was pink, was the color you saw the most. So. I can see a lot of versatility in this color, and especially with mixing it with other colors, I think it'll make the originals just so much more special. Okay, and then I repositioned the camera here with all the colors just dotted out on the paper. The Piemontite Genuine Undersea Green, and then the Opera Pink at the bottom there. And I'm just taking a wet brush, and I'll drag out the color to see what we've got. The top one, my first impression is it's a little bit more brown than I remember it being. And it could be the color might have possibly separated. Um, it could have been the way they applied it to the paper. So I will have to play with that a little bit more to see the effects that it can make. Because that is the genuine, which means it's going to granulate uh, most likely when it dries. So that was the main thing I was going for. Though I, I want it to be a little bit more red than that. But with watercolors, you know, you just mix it in there. It's not... A big problem so I'm still excited to use that. The green is also really nice. It has a slightly gold undertone. Not too bad. Um, it is a little bit different than the serpentine green that I do have so I am not mad at all about adding it even though they are really close in color and normally I don't want to get two colors that are too close because the watercolor palette that I travel with is limited in space. So I wanna make sure that anything I add has a nice um, variance in color. But I will add this because I have maybe 15 spaces that are empty and I feel like I can get some good use out of it. The Opera Pink is incredibly bright and vivid and it is crazy how intense that is. And I think that this is gonna be best for making really vivid purples, especially in um, like sunsets or I don't know like yeah just really bright purple another goodie I got is the Daniel Smith masking fluid I haven't used this particular brand before but it came with some nice little tiny nibs and I feel like I, I could get some nice lines out of that and uh, somebody that I know another artist said that she just uses a paintbrush and it works really well that way so I'm excited to give this a try uh, on a piece pretty soon. I could not resist getting this and I have a lot of varnishes and sealers in other brands but this one is specifically for watercolors and the sealer is kind of a way to replace the glass so you don't have to use glass at all and it still protects the artwork so it's kind of like you frame it more like an oil painting. And what I did was I grabbed some of the golden heavy gel gloss and you can use the light gel gloss as well, but I used this to mount watercolor paper to um, board so that it stays perfectly flat. And this is also how I'm going to put it into the frame without the glass. So it stays flat, it's kind of like a multi-use thing where it prevents the watercolor paper from warping. And especially when I apply really heavy washes, it won't pool. And then once that's that test is done, I'll spray it with our, this uh, archival varnish and we'll see how it works. So I will be uploading another full video um, all about my test with mounting using the gel. So watch out for that and I will go over that a little bit more in detail about what I did and my findings with that. All right, so here is my full haul. 
I know it doesn't look like a lot, but this is, a, as far as professional grade art supplies, this is quite, this is a good amount. So, I mean, I, f I feel like I did really well. I controlled myself and I didn't get too crazy. So I'm excited to use a lot of this. Uh, and thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions about this stuff. I will do my best to answer them. And um, yeah, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye!